When you think about it, we take a heck of a lot of stuff for granted when we work with Swift code. For example, if we were to write four is less than five, we expect that to return true because the developers of Swift and LLVM, the sort of larger compiler project that sits around Swift, they've already done all the hard work of making sure that calculation is actually true for us. So we haven't got to worry about it. But what Swift does really well is extend functionality into lots of places using protocols and protocol extensions. For example, we know that four is less than five. We know it's true, okay? Because we can compare two integers, four and five, and decide this one here come before this one here. Four comes before five in the numerical sequence, okay? Swift then extends that functionality to arrays of integers. We can compare all the integers in an array to decide whether one should come before or after another. And then Swift uses that array and that sorting to just get the whole array sorted. So in Swift, we expect her to say there's an array of numbers like let values is one, five, three, six, two, nine, for example, and then make a little loop here of all those values with ID of self, because they're all unique. I'll do a text string of that number, like so. And when that code builds, with a capital S in string, obviously, when that code builds, we should see a simple list of 135629, like that, boom. But we expect to be able to say, actually, you know, I type those numbers in the wrong order, just sort them for me. And that code, when it runs, boom, one through nine, all appear correctly. We don't have to tell sorted how it works. He understands how arrays of integers work, how they should be sorted. Now consider a struct like this one. There is a struct called user that conforms to the identifiable protocol. This has an ID, UUID, then a first name, string, and a last name, string. So we can go ahead and make an array of these users. Let's just delete this code here for temporarily. We'll say our user array contains a user uh, with the first name of Arnold, last name Rimmer, then a user, first name Christine, last name Ko Chansky. And let's do one more. User first name David, David, ID. Last name Lister. And they conform to identifiable already, so I can just write in here, go over all the users, no ID anymore because it conforms to identifiable. And I'll just write the text of, let's do user.lastname, comma, user.firstname. Like that. Uh, oops, Daisy, this uses user in. There we are, so I'm missing. Boom. On that runs, we're gonna see Rimmer Arnold, Kachansky, Christine, List of David. And that works just fine because the user struct conforms to identifiable. But what if we want to show all these users here in a sorted order? If we said, okay, we've seen how sorting arrays works, I'm gonna try calling sorted on users, that code won't build. Swift does not understand what sorted means here doesn't understand, do you mean by first name, by last name, by first name and last name, by ID, or something else? Now, one way of doing this is to provide a closure or function to this sorted call here to do the sorting ourselves. This will hand us two objects from the array, $0 and $1 if using the shorthand names here. And we've got to return true if the first object, $0, should come before the second object, $1. And so we could say sorted based on does the first last name come before the second last name, like that. And that's valid. So it's now Kachansky, Lister, Rimmer, K L R, which makes sense. And that code works. It's fine. But it's not an ideal solution for two reasons. First, this, how we sort information. I consider it to be model data, by which I mean it's affecting the way we actually work with the user struct. Now this struct and all its properties are our app's data model. 
And in a well-developed application, we don't really want to tell the model how it should behave inside our SwiftUI code. SwiftUI represents our view, our layout here. And if we put our model code in there, trying to sort stuff down here, then the things just get confused. Second, what happens if you want to try and sort user arrays in multiple places? Well, you can just copy and paste the sorted code again and again and again. Sort last name less than last name again and again and again. But then you realize you're just making a problem for yourself. If you end up changing the way your sorting logic works, perhaps you sort by first name, then last name, or last name, then first name, whatever, then you've got to try and search through all the code to make sure all these sorted calls get updated at the same time. Swift has a better solution for us. Arrays of integers get a simple sorted method because it understands already how to sort two integers. We're going to provide this closure every single time. In coding terms, int, that object inside the array, conforms to the comparable protocol, which means it defines a function that takes two integers and returns true if the first comes for a second. This thing right here. Now we can make our own types conform to comparable and when we do so, we'll also get that same sorted method with no parameters. This takes two steps. We want to add the comparable protocol to the definition of our user type and then add a method called less than, just like angle bracket less than, which takes two users and returns true if one comes for the other. So we'd say here, you are now comparable and identifiable. And inside here, is a new method static func less than that's angle bracket left hand side object will be a user right hand side object will be another user and it will turn bool if the left hand side comes for the right hand side which for us is simply lhs dot last name is less than rhs dot last name the same check down here just now with uh names left hand side and right hand side that's there because we always write user a less than user b One's on the left, one's on the right. There's not a lot of code on there. It's quite small, but there's still a lot to unpack. First, yes, this method's just called less than. Okay, it's the job of this method here to decide whether one user is less than, i.e. in a sorting sense, less than another user, comparing these two right here. So adding functionality to an existing operator, less than is already used to compare integers or strings or dates, and now it's used for comparing users. This is called operator overloading, and it can be both a blessing and a curse. Second, again, the LHS and RHS are coding conventions, short for left-hand side and right-hand side. And they exist because the less than operator has something on the left and something on the right. Now you can see this method here returns a Boolean, okay? This means we must decide whether this user comes for this user or the other way around. There is no room for they are the same, okay? That's handled by another protocol called equatable. Can it be equal to something else? Fourth, this method is marked static, which means it's called on the user struct directly, right? User dot less than one side and other side like this, rather than making an instance of a user struct first and calling on that. And finally, our logic here is really simple. We're just passing on the comparison to one of our properties inside the struct, asking in this case, Swift to use less than on the last name string of both our objects. You can of course add as much logic here as you want, but ultimately you must return true or false. Now, one thing you can't see in this code is that conforming to comparable, you can see we have this whole less than working here just fine, but it also gives access to greater than, like that. That also now works for user instances. This is the opposite of less than. So internally, Swift just creates it by using less than, then flipping the results, which makes sense. So now our user struct conforms to both comparable and identifiable, we can go ahead and use the built-in sorted method like that, and it will work. Code still runs great. And this resolves the problems we had before. We now isolate all our model functionality right here inside our user. And we no longer have to copy and paste that sorting code around. We just call sorted directly everywhere. 
safe from the knowledge if we ever change the algorithm for sorting this one right here, all our code will adapt.